Golden history for a club that is enjoying a golden period at the moment. Yeovil arrive at a Bloomfield Road ground undergoing major reconstruction work as runaway conference leaders confident of claiming their 20th league victim in the cup. They've made it to the second round for a non-league record 25th time. No wonder Blackpool are more than a little preoccupied with the task ahead. Mahon is without the former Manchester United youngster Richard Wellens, who's suspended today, and veteran Mike Newell, who's injured. Number five, Ian Hughes, returns after missing the last game suspended and injured, but much could depend on Blackpool's left, where John Hills and Paul Simpson have been in good form. Yeovil's team, the same that started the 5-1 win over Colchester in the last round, is entirely under the age of 30, Peter Taylor would approve. Moore is one of six starters with league experience. Midfielder Nick Crittenden played in the Premiership for Chelsea and former Plymouth man Barrington Belgrave could be going back to the league. He's been linked with South End. Who's sometimes stranger than fiction, boys. Terry Skiverton, the skipper leading out Yeovil, has been used to football fiction. He had a, a part and was also the football coordinator for Sky Soap Dream Team. But today, Skiverton hoping to play his part in the furthering of the Yeovil fairy tale. They're seeking their 20th league scalp in this competition and their 13th appearance in the third round of the FA Cup. They already hold the record for that for a non-league club. Can they extend it here today? Find out after the break. Here's Steve Bushell. Now Collins, who followed Steve McMahon from Swindon Town. Smith sliding in, judgment of tackle so difficult today. Think a bit of water skiing. Well, I think the referee perhaps has also got to be a little bit patient. He's got to be accepting of the conditions. It is difficult for players. There are going to be misjudged tackles. Genuine threat, Simpson. And he gives Pennock his first direct examination. Hills. Knocked on by Orberon. This is Murphy. Comes back off the goalkeeper and Ormerod is denied but Simpson comes in and just as he was lining up a pile driver, Piper made a really important challenge there. Hills gets it back across, Bushel and just beyond the reach of Paul Simpson this time. Good pressure being exerted by the home team though. Well that's a very good start by Blackpool but really the key to this is Skiverton. He misses the first header. As that ball is coming out, Ormanrod looks as if he's going to slot that one away, but Skiverton just throws himself in the way. Wonderful defending from the Yeovil Town skipper. Blackpool taking the game to their opponents as they really have to. Line just below halfway in the third division. It's been a desperately disappointing season so far for Blackpool, but Ormanrod could give them a lift here. But instead, just lifts it over. Here's Murphy. Got through well, the goalkeeper saves well at point blank range. And then it's lifted away by Smith. Well, it's another very good opportunity indeed for Blackpool. And the goalkeeper again, Tony Pennock, coming to the rescue. But there, just look at this space. As this ball comes through from Simpson, Murphy finds himself really one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, tries to slot it past him, but to be fair to Tony Pennock, he came off his line very quickly. Just look at his position as he makes that save. He is a long way out there. There's Lindegaard. Belgrave. Piper. Patmore with a header on. Hills resisting the challenge of Lindegaard. Murphy. Now Belgrave. Lovely touch from Lindegaard this time to Way. Little ball for Crittenden. Two players in to block him initially, but he's through now! to their old tricks again, Yeovil, the cup giant killing specialists. Crittenden forcing his way through and scoring the opening goal after they've had to absorb so much pressure in the first half. Well, Steve McMahon will be going absolutely ballistic on the bench. And this is really just down to determination. They've kept at it, they've worked, they've battled, but just look at Crittenden there. There's one block, 
and that's the important block that he wins against John O'Connor. Really, that's poor defending. You're looking for your centre half to be strong there, and he wasn't. And Crittenden was more determined. I tell you what, he didn't have an awful lot to aim for, Rob, and he slotted it home superbly well. They may have been second best. Now they're going at half time, the best. And another cup upset for Yeovil on the cards. Nick Crittenden getting the goal in injury time in the first half and Blackpool paying the price for a series of missed opportunities. It must have been hugely frustrating for Steve McMahon having seen his side dominate really for a large chunk of the first 45 minutes, Rob, to go in 1-0 down at half-time and I'm sure it would have been a, a mixed message that he would have sent it. At the interval, I'm sure he would have said to his players, keep playing the way you are offensively, but defensively, we have got to do a lot better. Well, Crittenden, the goal scorer, has Blackpool on the back foot again, but this time Hughes stands up to it. Actually made his Blackpool debut against Arsenal, and it was an Arsenal team that included one Colin Addison, the current Yeovil manager. Here's Skiverton, under pressure from Ormerod, who stole in! And he hasn't managed to do enough! The angle was difficult for him. Good attempt. Well, sometimes you really depend on good fortune. This is exactly what Yeovil gets. Skiverton doesn't really deal with the ball over the top. And again, Ormerod showing that sort of pace, that sort of awareness that he showed in the first 45. He is a threat, but it is the tightest of angles. And that really does go agonizingly wide. It's White with a free kick. Away by Hughes, that's Smith. There appeals for handball there against Coyd, but Crittenden has emerged with the ball anyway. And showing the persistence that led to his goal, Crittenden. And it's Smith who hooks it in this time, and Pat Moore was uh, just at the back post. And flying in came Terry Skiverton. Well, at one end of the field, Terry Skiverton very nearly cost his team a goal. At the other end of the field, he very nearly gets his team a goal. He gets half a yard in the box. Again, some very poor marking from Blackpool. At times, they really have gone to sleep in important areas. Reed. Patmore pressuring the goalkeeper, just giving him something to think about. And Smith with the attempt! Well, it wasn't a bad effort, was it, from Ben Smith? But once again, it's a closing down of Yeovil. They really have worked hard. Just look at the front two in the picture there. It forces the error from the goalkeeper. It's spectacular from Smith. It's a comfortable save in the end from Barnes. Barnes going absolutely ballistic, really, with Danny Coyne. He just said, get the ball into the box. It's not really an afternoon just to play a little two or three yard passes in areas where the ball is going to hold up because of the conditions and here's Pat Moore and oh, it's a wonderful save Barnes denying Pat Moore but how costly could that miss be well that was game set and match as far as Colin Addison was concerned it's a poor back pass really they get themselves into all sorts of problems the youngster Danny Coyd you would have expected him to score wouldn't you He's got plenty of them this season, but unfortunately he can't tuck it past the oncoming Phil Barnes. And full credit to the keeper, good save. You can see that Blackpool have had 26% of attacking play in Yeovil's defensive third. However, it hasn't really been of enough quality to trouble the goalkeeper, Tony Pennock. He made two excellent saves in the first half. Here's yeah, Simpson. Can they find more to trouble him with yet? Played by Smith, Collins looking to play Hills in, and he has done, it's John Hills! And it's another good save by the goalkeeper. He has been in outstanding form, the goalkeeper. There you can see Hills getting in behind him, shoots with his right foot, good save from the goalkeeper, gets a great sight of the goal, almost went through the legs of the skipper, Terry Skiverton, but he has been in inspirational form this afternoon. Simpson's cross towards Murphy and it's another save for the collection of Tony Pennock. Well that's the first sight that John Murphy has had in this second half Rob and it was a great ball in from Paul Simpson once again we've talked about this quality gets himself across the first defender
Do have some very good goalkeeping, but some excellent positional play. There you can see, gets himself in the right position from that header from Murphy. But that's really the first time that Murphy has had any joy from wide areas. The Oval fans are lighting their flares already, preparing to celebrate what would be yet another famous victory, but it's by no means assured yet. With just over a minute of normal time remaining. Oh, the wall's got to be right. The wall didn't do its job in the first half when Simpson was on the ball. A low one through from Simpson. It's breaking about all over the place, and it was a real opportunity. And it was well turned around again by the hero of the day, Pennock. Well, what a save this is. It really is. I mean, it's like a pinball machine in there. I think it's Clarkson that has the final touch. And Pennock, again, wonderful positioning. Not back in again by Reed, and again the goalkeeper stands his ground. What a hero he's been today. Oh, he's been inspirational. He's given the rest of the team a lift, hasn't he? And uh, a mixture of at times, a little bit of luck, but he's deserved it. Made some wonderful saves. Well, they haven't come any better than this. He has made some important saves this afternoon. He won't have seen that till very late and that's just pure reactionary and Yeovil Town have done it again they've added another FA Cup famous name to their list of scalps their 20th league team dismissed from this competition and for the 13th time in their history they are in the third round of the FA Cup Nick Crittenden the hero for Colin Addison and his club and now they have the opportunity to pull out a plum in the third round Crittenden the former Chelsea man getting the goal in injury time in the first half and they showed stout hearts and brave resistance none more so than was shown by their goalkeeper Tony Pennock to keep Blackpool at bay but it really is a day of all-round heroism for the team at the top of the Vauxhall Conference and another memorable day for them to celebrate. Well, this is fantastic sight, isn't it, really? And I think that they've earned that. They've been organised, they've been committed, they've been determined, they had a good game plan. Blackpool tried their best. Steve McMahon's players gave him everything, but they couldn't conjure up that vital goal, and that's really what's cost them. Yeovil managed that, such an important time. The determination of Crittenden right on the half-time mark and it was a wonderful finish from the tightest of angles and they deserve that celebration, they can enjoy their evening and this is about the magic of the FA Cup, this is about the enjoyment, this is about a non-league team coming to a league team and getting such a vital and incredible result and they won't want to leave the pitch, they're enjoying every moment of this. A day of joy for Yeovil, and the goal that won it for them came right at the end of the first half in injury time. It was a bitter pill for Blackpool to swallow. Nick Crittenden was the man who scored it. We talk about the romance of the FA Cup. Well, Yeovil must be the Barbara Cartlands of the competition because they've had so many romantic fairy tale victories, and this is the latest in a long, long line.